Spirit changed his message. The father of the preacher, bless him, he's done enough. He's done enough for us to love him. He's done enough for us to love one another. He's done enough for us to obey him. He's done enough for us to put in place in our lives. He's done enough for us to cross him and to believe the lean on him.
We don't live to satisfy the flesh. The flesh is not this issue and talking about and so forth. The flesh, according to the Bible, in this system, is the unregenerated man. The one, the person who is not in Christ, who is not in God, who has not accepted Christ as their personal Savior, that they act according to the dictates of the flesh. Once we accept Christ as our Savior, we are no longer under the management of the flesh. We are now under the management, at least we are supposed to be, under the management of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, any man in Christ is a new creature, which means a new creation. And, and all things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Yeah. Being in Christ calls for a change in our attitude. Which is our mind. Let this mind be new, which was also in Christ Jesus. Don't be conformed to this world, Romans 12, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. And so that being connected to Christ calls for a radical change in our way of thinking. And a radical change in our way of doing things. A new value system we have in place. We must learn the power of the new life as it is in Christ. Many Christians live defeated life because they don't know, understand, or believe that this new life in Christ have also brought with it a new power for us to live with. You see, you don't live by the power of the flesh. You live by the power of Christ who lives in you. I, 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 I can do that. You must, as Paul says to the Roman Christian, reckon yourself to be dead to the power of sin. That is, sin does not have to rule in my life. And by years of obedience to Christ, His power is activated by the presence of the Holy Spirit in me. So the conclusion of the matter is that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You yield to Him in obedience. You don't try to figure it out. You don't try to dissect it. It cannot be understood by the power of the intellect. It must be accepted by faith. By faith, I am an overcomer. By faith, I have the victory. By faith, I can do in Christ what I cannot do in myself. Christ makes it possible for you to love everybody. He makes it possible for you to rejoice all weeks. He makes it possible for you to hold on, as I say last week, when it seems there is nothing to hold on to. It's faith in Christ that makes me know that even though we can endure in the night, joy is going to come. A change is going to come. My situation is going to get better. I will prevail. Yes. And when I do come forth, yes. I won't come forth like I looked and was when I went in. <laughs> when I come forth, yes. I'm going to come forth as fair I'm going to come forth stronger. Yes. I'm going to come forth with a better understanding, a deeper experience. I'm going to come forth with a stronger testimony. That's what the Christian life is. So then, Yes, Paul said, because this is true. You've been risen with Christ. He said, set your affection on things above. Set your affection on things above. And he goes on to say, where well, Christ is seated on the right hand. The right hand of God was two replication. When the Jews speak of the right hand, Paul is speaking of power. Right hand, and the hand of the Lord was upon him. And the Ezekiel was laid out by the Spirit of the Lord, and the hand of the Lord was upon him. Every time you read in the scripture, the hand of the Lord is talking about power. It's the power of the Lord. 
the power of the Lord. I hand of the Lord. The power of the Lord. So it speaks of power, but it also speaks of privilege. So Christ was given a privileged position. How do we know that? It's privilege. It speaks of privilege. Because you remember when John and Dan went to Jesus along with that mother? And she asked, Jesus, grant that one of my boys sit on your what? Right hand. Privilege. And so then, if we've been seated with Christ, set our affection on things above heaven, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, then Christ is in a position of power, and he has made available to you and I privileges. Pride is a privilege. The word of God is a privilege. Grace is a privilege. To live in grace. Mercy is a privilege. And so then we need the superior influence of heavenly things. Set your attention on things above. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because things of earth cannot satisfy the deep longing of your soul. Things of the earth, there is no class you can take. There is no school you can uh, in, 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 uh, involve yourself in. Are you enrolling? There is no class that's going to enable you to acquire power. To overcome temptation. There's an evil tendency in all of us. And that tendency will continue to get the best of whether it's bad energy, whether it's negative thing, whether it's uh, uh, whether it is dislike of other folks, an unforgiving spirit, the negative attitude and tendency of our life cannot be overcome by anything else. We need heavenly influence. We need a power acting upon our soul that is greater than any power that can be exerted upon us by the world. Am I going to do this? Yes. Y'all understand that? Yes. Yeah, I said I'm a bit of you understand. So we need the power of a heavenly influence. That's what Christianity is about. That's what God offers. He offers us a heavenly influence. Heavenly power. Heavenly assistance. Thank God you're here today. And, and you leave it here with a greater hope. You leave it here with your head up high. Knowing that no matter what happens, beat me down and get the best of me. It doesn't have to get the best of me any longer. Right now, the books are here. You fail. You yield, and every time we fail to yield, we've been put in a column. But listen, by the grace of God and the power of the Spirit, I failed last night, you failed this morning, we can put a period right there. That's where it's going to end, why? Because I understand that I've been running with Christ, and I'm seated with him in heavenly places. The power that belongs to Christ is now residing in me. Because you are the righteousness of God. And you can engage in right doing. Listen, Paul tells us this and he shows us this in his statement in Galatians 2 and 20, where he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm crucified with Christ. Dead to sin. Yet I live resurrection. And yet it's not I that live. I'm playing with the same sin, I'm playing with the same weakness, I'm playing with the same thoughts. Paul said with everybody else. But I, I, I don't live according to my own, the dictates of my own flesh, my own heart. I have learned how to yield myself to Christ. And now I live by the power of Christ. As you yield to him, I said it before, and you have to hear that, as I yield to Christ, as you yield to him, the power of God is activated in your heart by faith, and the Holy Spirit will guide and direct you. He will lift you above the frequent failures. 
so that I can look at myself in the mirror and not totally recognize me. Because I've been failing for so much, I've been yielding for so much, and so many times I've been striking back and I've been playing a tit for tat. But now that the Spirit has grabbed the hold of me, I look in the mirror and I see not a new creature. I see someone who can stand. I see someone who can overcome. I see someone who already has the victory. I see someone who understands that whenever I feel, I can go boldly to the throne of grace and I can confess. Said that my said that great in times of need. That's the get gospel message. So to cheer up. If I don't say nothing yet, you're, you're good enough now to cheer up and leave out of here and live the life of victory. Walk out of God in a person, you say something wrong, you go and ask my forgiveness for that bad attitude and go and live and live free. Galatians 5 and 1 stand fast in a liberty way. Christ has set you free. He has set you free from this drunken life. You don't have to let it get the best of you. You ought to be on top of it. My With Christ's death, nevertheless I live resurrection and life. We died to the old life of a servant. Our connection with the old life of sin has been cut. Well, why do we still fall? Why do we still fail? We fail because we don't apply the grace of God or the truth of God working in Christ to our present life. You don't fail because you're having no power. You won't yield because it was impossible for you to stand. We yield because we don't apply the truth of God's word relative to sin and failure. And the truth of God's word is that if you abide in me, right there, and my word abide in you, you shall bring more fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. For without me, you can't do nothing. But in me, you can't do all things. Yes. Yes. All things. Yes. Learn. Forgive. Yes. Move on. Yes. Shake it off. Yes. You can do all things. Yes. Shake your finger in the devil's finger. Yes. And say, you meant it for bad. Yes. But God meant it for good. You thought this was going to defeat them. It's going to destroy them. I got news for you. In Christ, I can do all things. And I'm going to rejoice always. No matter what happens, no matter what it says, no matter what it's done, I'm going to rejoice because the battle does not belong to me. The battle belongs to God. And with God, I cannot fear. Can justify anything worthy of being that is outside of the domain of heaven. But as I said earlier, we not only are connected to his death, our union with him connects us to his resurrection. We are challenged to become like this. We are challenged to become in experience what we already are in grace. In grace. I'm a child of God. Yeah. In grace, you are already seated in heavenly places. Yeah. In grace, yeah. you are already a victor and you are more than a conqueror. In grace, you've been given an eternal position in God, unalterable, that cannot change. But now, you have to make it now a reality in your experience. It's like, it is. it's like someone says to you, you know what? Everything that is in one needs, everything that is in one, I'm going to pay for it and buy for you. But one thing I'm going to do, I won't go get the stuff off the shelf and bring it to your house. I won't get the stuff out of the technology department in Walmart and bring it to you. I want you to know that all of it is paid for. Now, credit you to your account. All you got to do is go there. Get whatever you want. If you want to stay there, go there and stay there. My help is enough. If you need a computer, go to Walmart. And then get off the shelf. Well, what about the man when you see me walk out? Now, all right, you know. 
have been purchased, they'll come. Walk out. They never come to you, but you have to get home and you realize that you choose a, choose a small computer. You want a big one, you say, go back. Living to Jesus. We're alive to God and it's a blessing. 
God give us the strength that neither suffering nor sickness, nor persecution nor trouble can destroy. We crown our feeble effort on trying to preach with our limited ability, limited knowledge. And yet we crown our feeble effort with his grace. And he makes it beneficial to us even when we fall short ourselves. And that's why you call them your little life. You do good. Do what you can. Well, I just don't have enough. Maybe I don't have the words to say. Go out and say the words that you do have. Because God's going to crown your feeble effort with his blessing. And so that you will be able to accomplish in him what you cannot accomplish in yourself. Your labor is not in vain. Satan gets so high, so low, but say it. Say it. Well, you hit the wrong note. That's okay. Say it. I like the other one. That better than this word. Don't have to like them. Do the best that I can. Well, you split up words. Oh, what? <laughs> you split up words. So what? You get your adjectives mixed up with your pronoun. So what? Your adjectives don't come out like this before. So what? <laughs> what I do know is that Jesus died for sin and yet you turn your life to him. Give your life to him. He'll make your life brand new. Down in the fountain. I know that. On Calvary, down in the fountain, filled with blood. He crowns our feeble efforts. He helps us to overcome sin and temptation. He delivers our loved ones from sinful habits and practices. That's the marvel of grace of God. Paul said, if you have been risen, she's right there. If you have been risen, you've been made alive with Christ. Then seek those things which are above. That is, seek those things that really matter in life. Seek love. Seek goodness. Seek compassion. Do good. Do right. Encourage somebody. That's what it's all about. God has put folks in your life. And he will continue to put people in your life. They don't need your money at this point. But they need an encouraging word. They need an arm thrown around their shoulder. They need to hear that uh, they're praying for them. And you are praying with them. Don't back get all into this business. You don't even know the details of that work, that prayer. Just let them know that what's praying for you, whatever it is, God knows what it is. If you know what you need, if you know what you need, if God can give you what you need, I'm lifting you up in prayer. Don't call your buddy on the phone. Hey, did she tell you what it is? Come on, man. You know we should have this kind of problem. We know what kind of problem it is. Because if you know it, you can't do nothing about it. If you, if you are a problem solver and a problem ever, you would have the problem you have. Oh, yeah. Just know that God, let them know that God cares. Yeah. And you care. Yeah. And you are, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Yes. Am I helping tonight? Yes, but Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father, exalted the position of confident and blessing for all of his people. Content, contentment can only come from above. Money, however necessary it is, cannot make a person happy. Happy, earthly recognition has its limitation. Identification with the world you leave. Bang. Somebody going to take your place. You might be the king of the baseball game, now you might be the focus of everybody's attention, and you might have the important people involved in your life, but sooner or later, you're going to move on. Somebody else going to take the stage. Don't think that pop stop whenever the president stops saying, don't think that pop stop when Michael uh, uh, Jackson went on. It's always plenty of about the limitation. They holler, they call the common law, and they know why they're going to Somebody else will come. I was coming up, but for the most part, she 
see Elder Franklin was my house. I could memorize all of his songs. Never preached them, but I would memorize them. The Eagles stirred the nest and all of his songs. Some of you older ones remember that. But then he moved on, and Jesus walked with that. One of the great preachers that he is. He did a mind of the stage and went to the country. Now he's not on the stage. I mean, they, they did that work. But, 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 but now we got other people. We got West. We got Fellas Chapman and all of these couples. And not me too. And I'm going to give you a problem about that movement.
they haven't been able to hear me. But I learned your word. And I believe your word. Your word says that I can be helped. But the help must come from you. Why don't you come one more time? God has spoken to your heart. Don't let the devil steal your home. This is your home. He has a back home. He can't interfere with his home. Because it's a moment that will determine for how your eternal destiny. God bless you, you may be seated. Thank you for your business.
But as you come, you bring to us not only what we have or what we don't have, but you bring more.